It's not a diet, it is mathematics. You can't eat mathematics any more than you can eat science, technology, or engineering. None of the STEM subjects are edible. Before I did YouTube, I'd have conversations with people in my normal life where I would try to explain something about health and fitness, and doing it was like banging my head against a wall. They wouldn't get it. And I'd come away frustrated and still thinking about it, and then a better way to explain it would suddenly come to me, but by then it's too late, the conversation is over. Now though, I can just do a video and put my better explanation here. Now whether that helps you or not, who knows, but it gets off of my chest. If it is useful, please like and subscribe, and then I don't feel like I'm banging my head against anything. So recently I'm with a client in my normal job, which is nothing to do with health and fitness. Let's call him Bob. Bob is big, he's 40, 50 pounds too heavy, has been for the 10 years I've known him. And he says, oh, Mark, you've lost some weight. And we chat about that and my training, and he asked me what my diet looks like, because he started going to the gym himself. And I say, well, in short, it's plant-based, it's high protein, with some use of intermittent fasting. And Bob says, that's interesting, because my trainer down at the gym has told me that protein doesn't matter that much, and intermittent fasting doesn't work, and the only diet that matters is calories in, calories out. He didn't mention the plant-based bit, but we had already chatted about vegan bean burgers, and he nearly threw up, so I'm guessing they're not his favorite. Anyway, I started to explain my take on what his trainer had told him, and then I realized, A, it wasn't going in, B, we were supposed to be discussing the diversification of his offshore trust fund, and C, he was now distracted thinking about what his favorite burger was. So here I am. So first of all, the primary definition of diet, how I use the word, is what you or any group of people or any animal eats on a regular basis. What's a cow's diet? Grass. A giraffe? Leaves. High ones mostly. What's my dog's diet? Raw meat. Bob's diet? Cows. No one is saying, what's a lion eat? Calories in, calories out. Because that is mathematics, it's not food. It's not even complicated mathematics. Not that it would be more nourishing if it were calculus. It is simply the calories you consume subtract calories you burn. And 99.9% .9 of people and 100% of animals don't give it much thought. The same as I don't give much thought to the mathematics of t-shirt on, t-shirt off. I just make sure at the end of the day, I'm still just wearing one. But despite that, so many people want you to pitch calories in, calories out against as an alternative to diets. It should not be maths versus keto or maths versus carnivore. The maths is always there, whatever the diet, whatever you've eaten, the same as a lion could do it, if it could count. So pitching it as a competitor to other diets makes no sense. I've said this before, calories in, calories out is like lift v gravity. The mathematics of that need to work for your plane to fly. But if somebody asks you what you flew to your holidays on, you don't say lift v gravity, you say a 787. Window seat for me, because I'm 6'6". Six, six. Now, if you apply lift v gravity to your 787, it doesn't add up. Legroom is the least of your worries. But you can do that to every plane, the same as you can apply calories in, calories out to every diet. And if it doesn't add up right, you have problems. In the same way that if a plane can't get off the runway because it has too many bobs on board, some engineer somewhere would need to do calculations of lift v gravity to see if that was the issue. And if you're too fat or too thin, you should look at the maths in the same way. I am currently trying to drop body fat. So I had to look at the numbers daily. In an ideal world, much like a lion, availability of food and common sense would mean I wouldn't need to. But my food is not scarce and it doesn't run away from me. So I do. So my point is not calories in, calories out doesn't matter. That's as nuts as saying forget the gravity lift stuff and just hope the plane flies. The mathematics has to be right. If my calories in, calories out calculation does not come out with a negative number at the end of the day, I will not lose body fat. It doesn't matter if I'm vegan, paleo, one meal a day. If I eat one meal a day and calories in is more than calories out, I will get heavier. You cannot have a diet that breaks the rules and works the way the mathematics says it shouldn't. But you do need a diet. The idea that calories in, calories out is the diet is just so unhelpful. I see people time and again asking about losing weight, and if they should eat this or that, and somebody will come along and say, ah, it makes no difference, calories in, calories out, eat less, move more. And then we wonder why most people are overweight. The secret is finding a diet that works for you and works for the mass. The two things are both required. For me, plant-based works, because I like to eat that way. It has very little to do with calories in, calories out, but it needs to be limited in a way that does adhere to that. And now I often do intermittent fasting and fasted cardio. Two things that really get the calories guys agitated. They just say, why? Just count calories. Here's why. Intermittent fasting means I don't eat till midday, so no food for half the day means less time eating. Less time to eat, less food eaten. When I do my maths at the end of the day, a huge chunk of calories is missing because I didn't have a kilogram of Cocoa Pops to kick things off. That is good for the numbers, and it's easy for me to do. 
But people will say, that's not intermittent fasting, that's just calories in, calories out. No, the intermittent fasting is exactly why the calories were not there in the first place, and therefore exactly why the mathematics worked. Back to our overloaded plane of bobs. If the airline offers free upgrades on the next flight to any bob getting off, and then the lighter plane can fly, the solution was free upgrades. So anyone saying, nah, it wasn't, it was increased lift, that's all you needed, is an idiot. Or the sort of person that points out that the enemy planes in Top Guns weren't real MiGs. Either way, not someone to get stuck with at a party. Intermittent fasting is my free upgrades. It's a way of me easily, happily, in a way that motivates me getting the right numbers at the end of the day. The same with fasted cardio. When I was 100 pounds overweight, I always ran before food in the morning. No need, people say, makes no difference. Just calories, yes, it did make a difference. Food at seven, run at eight, food at nine ends up with a very different number for me than no food at seven, run at eight, food at nine. So fasted cardio was my solution to getting bobs off the plane, metaphorically. I'm not suggesting we don't allow fat people on planes. That's a very different video. I'm joking, calm down, fat bob. You have to allow people to pick their diet. It has to motivate them, excite them, interest them, be sustainable for them. I don't want to eat a carnivore diet any more than I want to fly on a holiday on a plane with no legroom. I don't care if both of those things hit the right numbers, they are not for me, so I won't do them. I am not losing weight because I eat plant-based or skip breakfast or in the past because I did keto or whatever. Done wrong, every one of those things would have made me fatter. I lose weight because all of those things stacked up right on the maths. Because I made sure they did by tracking the calories as I went. But the only reason I was able to eat like that on a consistent basis was because I enjoyed the diet and was motivated by it. If I was motivated to only eat food starting with letters A through to G, bye bye hummus, and it was calorie controlled, it would work for fat loss. And if it was the only diet in existence that did motivate me, it would be the best diet for my fat loss. The food and the mathematics are not the same thing, but you do need both. Pitched against each other means one will get the win and you'll be left with only the remaining one and you won't succeed. Telling most people to forget their diet, just look at the numbers, doesn't work. What they eat has to come first. When you stick a line in a zoo, someone somewhere has got to do the calorie counting to make sure with no end of food, it won't get fat. But they start with chunks of meat and then count. No zookeeper is saying 5,000 calories a day, give it that in noodles, it's all the same. I hope that makes more sense to you than how I explained it to Bob. And I say most people, I suppose there are people out there for whom the mathematics is everything. Who if you said, hey, fancy a free flight on your holiday, can't tell you on what, but the lift versus gravity is excellent, they would jump at the chance. But that is somebody who cannot complain when they get bored on the way to the Mediterranean because there's no in-flight movie in a hot air balloon.